Khadija Tizbahi. I'm an architect, urbanist, specialized in African cultural heritage, and I'm the founder of AfriCart, a digital platform dedicated to the promotion of contemporary art from Africa and its diaspora. I'm very happy to be here with uh, such uh, inspiring um, panelists in the framework of this uh, Africa Dialogue series. Uh, organized by the UN Office of the Special Advisor in Africa. So this year's theme is cultural identity and ownership reshaping, reshaping mindsets. Mm -hmm. And I have with me uh, two panelists. So the first one is Dr. Bertha Amisi, who is a specialist in the area of conflict and community development, peace advocacy and humanitarian intervention in Africa. She has worked in international and non-governmental institutions such as the UN, the Nairobi Peace Initiative Africa, and the Action Aid. Dr. Amisi has taught courses related to conflict studies and political science in American universities, such as the New School University and the Syracuse University in New York, and the Nova Southeastern University in Florida. Her research interests include political conflict, peaceful resolution of conflict, globalization, and state society relations in Africa. She is also interested in the role of music in conflict resolution in Africa. My second panelist is Mr. Dorsey Rugamba, who is a Rwandese author, act, actor, and stage director. He participated in several theatrical productions as an actor or director, which were performed in, between Africa and Europe. In 2020, he worked on Les Restes Suprême, a play on the restitution of African heritage produced by the National Theatre of Belgium. He's also working on an opera on the general history of Africa, which will be created in Rabat, Morocco, this year, as part of the first African capital of culture. Mr. Hugamba is also the founder of the Uwinto Workshops, uh, which he founded in Kigali in 2001, a space dedicated to contemporary performing arts in Rwanda. He also founded in 2012 the Rwanda Art Initiative, a non-profit structure intended to contribute to the prof professionalization of art industry in Rwanda, and Moyo, a publishing house with, uh, which publishes authors in African languages. So welcome to this discussion. And um, I will um, ask my first question to you, Dorsey. Uh, in your opinion, uh, what is the status of cultural industries in Africa and in particular in Rwanda? And how initiatives such as the Rwanda Art Initiative can play a role in impacting Africa's cultural and economic landscape? Hello, Alisa. And, uh, it's a pleasure to be on this uh, panel and dialogue about culture, ownership, and identity. And uh, I think uh it's a um, very important uh, topic because uh, africa uh, many countries uh, in africa are really young the the, the youth are the big yeah. part of the population yes. and to work in um to making grow the the culture industry uh, is uh it, it's economic growth. It's uh, very important for uh, the, co the social cohesion of, the, of a society. It, and also, it's uh, really important for our heritage, our patrimony, and, uh, and, um, and the creativity of this uh, youth. And uh, in Rwanda, for example, we make this uh, statement that we have many uh, different artists talented, but they need uh, culture uh, managers and uh, different people to work, uh, cultural entrepreneurs to, to beside them and work with them to create very powerful enterprises and uh, to make um, the industry become stronger and uh, this uh, exactly the mission we have in Rwanda Art Initiative, uh, not only to help artists, but also the cultural entrepreneurs who 
to become really, really stronger and, um, and create this uh, powerful industry. Okay. Thank you very much, Darcy. So you spoke about social cohesion. Yeah. So this leads me to my next question to you, Bertha. Uh, to what extent can culture play a role as a vehicle for peace in Africa? Um, that's actually a very important question because uh, I think it's an uh, it's at the core of of our own um, uh, ways of finding. Uh, meaningful solutions to the problems of violence in all its manifestations and violent conflict um, and how we even address uh, conflict, uh, not just in the sense of armed conflict, but in our everyday life, because uh, we, we conflict in every day, we engage in, we all come across conflict or we encounter conflict or we have conflictive situations in our everyday relations in the workplace, in the family. Um, so I'm seeing conflict, not just in the sense of this uh, international uh, relations or approach uh, with the states uh, fighting or armed groups fighting, but um, Culture is really our, our, our cultural resources and our um, uh, practices, let me say practices, are very important and interpretation is very important for allowing us to have um, or come up with or create, uh, make meaning and make sense in ways that are relevant uh, for our experience. Drawing, they give us a rich uh, uh, resources from language, uh, from artistic expressions, poetry, uh, song, dance, um, rituals, rituals which many of us have neglected uh, in ways uh, to, to, to help us address, uh, they give us resources that help us to innovate because again, we're in the 21st century with this internet and all new ways of communicating. Uh, but at the same time, uh, find solutions, come together to find solutions that are meaningful, are relevant, and they make sense for our reality, for the realities of those who are on ground, local communities. Um, so our cultural resources really, uh, this theme on cultural identity and ownership in, in terms of reshaping mindsets uh, is, is a very important theme for the AU has uh, identified for this year. I'm hoping that it can focus for those who are working in peace and for those who are concerned about peace and social cohesion is really an, a notion or an, uh, that is uh, very much a part of, of the, the quest and the search for peace, that they would look inward. We are looking now to what we have in hand and not looking outward to what others have in their hands to give us. Um, and, and, and I'm seeing it as a, a call to look at what we have in hand the rich heritage, the rich cultural resources, uh, carefully consider them as very crucial for informing the solutions uh, to the problems we have regarding violence. Uh, right now we have terrorism, this whole idea of terrorism and, and um, uh, the latest manifestations are the Boko Haram, uh, the, the ongoing problems in, in Northern Mozambique. Uh, so it's not just in, in, in Western Africa, Nigeria, and the Sahel region, but also in Southern and Eastern Africa, the Al-Shabaab in, in Somalia. So we need to uh, look inside and ask, you know, um, what do we have? Uh, because we do have, and, and how can we use what we have in, 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 in our, our rituals, our practices, our ways of understanding the, the world, uh, our ideas of the social, our our values and principles of Ubuntu um, to enhance social co uh, cohesion through peace building, peacemaking solutions uh, that are relevant for the reality in which we live. You know, they make sense for us, you know, in our languages, in our understandings and local understandings. They have to make sense for us to be able to own <laughs> and for us to be able to um, uh, find ways uh, of enhancing uh, our life, you know, uh, because we also have, everybody has aspirations for a, a full and an abundant life. 
Wow, thank you very much, Bertha. You said something that's uh, that very much speaks to me. You said that culture can make a meaning and make sense in in ways that are relevant. At least, at least it's a yes. it's a it's a goal that we can seek. And so my 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 next question to both of you is: uh, What is the role of culture and cultural industries in particular in the definition and reappropriation of our identity as Africans? Yeah, yeah, please um, we had the previous, you know, we had a very engaging discussion on this. So I guess we're continuing uh, uh, on that. And this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, come back after reflecting on that discussion. Um, and I want to just take off from where Dorsey had mentioned that um, uh, to first realize uh, that that uh, identity is, is, is our identity is not a fixed, <laughs> you know, it's dynamic. And I really liked that the way he, he, he pointed it out, how he phrased it or framed it. We, we, we need to first realize that our identity is dynamic. And, uh, and second, uh, we, we did touch on the fact that we, we are, we are not just, um, geographically as African peoples, we are just not confined to the continent. Um, uh, some of us known as African peoples were uh, forcefully removed through slavery uh, and the transatlantic uh, slave trade uh, was, uh, uh, in my view, like a Holocaust, you know, a, a horrible uh, incident in our history. And but it, it, it dispersed and it brought a whole group of people within the Americas and the Caribbean, and you have the African diaspora uh, who are you know, known as Africans. And even if they haven't grown up in the continent and cannot clearly trace lineage to a certain society or group in Africa, the, the, although I must say the genealogy, uh, uh, developments in genealogy are changing that. Uh, we, we, they, they still, there's a lot that we resonate with even when we encounter with uh, each other. There's, there's similarities, you know, and even though there are differences. But um, preceding this, the, this, the, the slave trade, uh, Africans have moved out, have traveled, have migrated within the continent uh, and outside the continent. The stories are not known. They are not written. Many of our, so, uh, our cultures or societies were not uh, uh, writing or writing down written or literate societies. They're more orate. Um, but, they are, but, but Africans have walked in the world. We are not just confined and, and, and fixed geographically in certain boundaries. Many of these boundaries uh, that we now uh, um, have and, and the modern states that, uh, that occupy these spaces are really a colonial uh, legacy. You know, they are not of our own wanting or, 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 or willing, you know, creation, uh, voluntary creation. So we're just working with what we have um, and, and, and making the most uh, out of it. Uh, so I just want to say that our identity, the cultural identity, uh, for us is is an ever changing one, and yet you can see certain things that are quite um, uh, constant uh, and that we still hold on to as African peoples uh, very much. And the big one that stands out for me is is that the social, the relational part, the the coming together, and it manifests in so many different ways. You know, of 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 family. I think the metaphor for me is that of family of brother or sister, even the way we are strangers when we meet each other, it's as we automatically go to calling each other brother or sister or mommy or uh, uncle or, you know, auntie. And, and uh, I'm not saying it's only uniquely African, but I noticed that, you know, and I've always found that fascinating. Uh, um, and, and, and so we, I just want to say that our identity is not just a cultural identity in the sense that we are these exotic beings with these practices and rituals uh, from a Eurocentric perspective. But I just want to say that we are fully human beings. We walk in the world and have a contribution to make in this world at the global level, at the international level, 
in wherever country, whichever country we are in, um, we are here as people who are making a contribution and a good contribution to enhance life <laughs> uh, and and uh, and bringing with to that contribution our own uh, cultural values of working together, solidarity. Uh, in, in Kenya, we have the term harambe, pulling together. Um, and, and I think that is a, a, a very uh, powerful contribution that we can work with. Um, we are also faced with the context of the social media, the new internet, and, and, the, and the new realities that it presents. And I am fascinated at the way the African peoples are using that to express their, uh, to say, here we are, you know, uh, and this is what we do, and and this is the contribution we are making. Your own uh, uh, art platform is one to say this is what uh, contribution we are making um, in, 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 in the world. And I think that is one way of enhancing the identity that and our cultural identity and our uniqueness, and but also not just celebrating our uniqueness and our unique contribution as African peoples, but also uh, uh, making a, a clear uh, uh, statement, as if to say, voicing very clearly, showing very clearly that we are part of humanity. We are human beings, people of dignity, you know, uh, and, and, and agents. And uh, with the skills and resources, capacities and abilities to make the world a different place. It's not just making Africa uh, a, a, a better place, but making even the world a better place. I believe a better Africa means a better world. Wow, thank yeah. you very much. What thank about you? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I agree with uh, Beta about, um, yes, identity, uh, I, I say most of the time it's a complex uh, yeah. world. We, there is a wrong side of this uh, world of identity because uh, uh, in many countries we can find uh, people, uh, far right, uh, politicians, uh, uh, playing, uh, about, uh, identity card as something exclusive. But as better mentioned, it's a dynamic, uh, the identity because, uh, we are, uh, the world is changing. Our societies are changing and ourselves are changing. And I have, I, I, we don't have the same identity uh, uh, as my father and my son will have another identity. Yeah, but we are connected. And this is uh, a good thing because uh, we don't live the same way. And uh, now I'm using a computer and using a telephone to, to connect to people. And tomorrow will be a new way of life. And culture is here to help us to found the, um, uh, the happiness in this change, just to, to, to create new identities and um, which is not really uh, a disruption with the past, no. It, it, to found um, the new interpretations of yes. our values in the modern society. And uh, we can celebrate our uniqueness in Africa, which is really beautiful because we have uh, many languages, uh, powerful culture, and uh, something really to, uh, to celebrate our heritage. And in the band time, we celebrate how this, our own culture can connect us to the world because uh, the African culture inspired the world. The cultures we, we, we found now in, uh, in America, in many parts of Europe now, in uh, uh, Latin America, are inspired and connected to the Africa. When we talk about salsa, when we talk about jazz, when we talk about uh, blues, this uh, how Africa uh, created a new sound and a new way of life to live in the world today. That's really something we powerful and uh, I think uh, culture have a big and major part to, to play. Uh, there is another reason because 
We have come from countries uh, with a violent past. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm from Rwanda, and uh, Bertha from Kenya, and we have uh, in our history this uh, violence, violence uh, from colonial era. era yeah. And the colonial era completely um, created uh, a chaos in our society, mm -hmm. destroyed many cultures, uh, even our temples and the uh, patrimonial uh, uh, artifacts are in the European Museum. This is not something really easy uh, to to see and uh, to, to relieve from. And, but it, it's who we are really. I am uh, from this, uh, I'm, I'm come from this history. That's why uh, I, um, I write in, in French and in Kenya Rwanda and uh, and I have these both languages and I have to accept that and to see the wrong side and the, 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 the beauty in it because it's me I have to accept myself and with the culture I help people uh, like me like uh, young people from today just to accept and to found how to 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 create the, the, a very beautiful meaning of that the, the, because if we don't see have uh, um, uh, culture to help us we will have another um, possibility to deal with the past it can be wrong uh, Violence, for example, from extremists, from violence, mm -hmm. from jihadists, for example, exploit, exploit, exploit this, uh, this, uh, problem of identity of people because there is a violence. But the answer is not to, to be violent. It's mm -hmm. to find a way just to, to say you can realize yourself and accept yourself. Now, because we are creating the new Africa uh, from now on. And this is a, a very big problem of the size today. Yeah. And I think uh, culture uh, is... Uh, there are many people who see culture as entertainment. Yes, yes. it's uh, sometimes entertaining, but it's beyond entertainment. It's a... Uh, it means peace and uh, cohesion, and the the the, the, the it's a, the solution of many problems we face today. I'd like to come in there uh, and say that uh, it's we we are neglecting our first. I acknowledge uh, Dorsey. I mean, you know, very good uh, contribution in terms of saying we 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 have to accept we are being pragmatic in terms of our identity. And we, we we can romanticize, but it's not okay. going, right now. We're in the we're in the where where we are with the challenges of the situation. Look at the situation right now with the pandemic, and mm -hmm. and what we are having to confront, um, which is impacting our uh, taken for granted ways of interpreting the world, which are really culturally rooted, and shaking. There's another shaking going on right now for people and what is the meaning look at our funerals um, yeah. what does it mean because you see our rituals and our practices are tied to our identities for many of us how you bury i mean uh, uh, where i come from amurogori how you bury you know is suddenly this is this just shaken you can no longer do certain things which were very important because funerals uh, were places of bringing the entire, the extended family and, and reaffirming connections, relationships. Uh, I, I remember from where I come from, even there was even uh, 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 updating, updating your 
your people who you are related to your clan who are members of the clan your 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 father's side your mother's side your i mean your cousins the people you never met because you all dispersed you're coming together the funeral is more than just merely burying uh, uh, uh somebody in the family um all that is now uh has to adapt to these pandemic conditions. What is that doing? Because these are very moments of reaffirming your identity as as a group, and 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 following from that your own understanding of yourself as belonging, you know, to a certain group. Uh, in addition to belonging in a community, because we are not just belonging in certain groups as uh, 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 is, is whether. Um, uh, the cultural groups we have or the ethnic communities and groups we belong to. Um, we also are belonging in a political community, you know, named these states that we name like Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, you know, uh, in addition to the particular uh, uh, community or group that you belong to uh, uh, within those uh, states. Um, and so, but at the local level, at that group level, identity group level, even at the family level, these rituals, these cultural practices are bringing in a gathering together uh, to reaffirm our identity, to say this is, you belong here, to say I belong somewhere, I, am, I, I, I have my people. But at the same time, we have also these rituals at the national level that affirm our identity as uh, uh, members of this political community. I, I, I I sometimes feel there's a bit of a contradiction, but we are still reinventing. When Darcy says it's a new Africa, we are now reinventing that. How do we have these rituals of gathering together, even as Kenyans and all that, we affirm that identity and how we walk in the world? Um, uh, and so for me, I, I see uh, cultural resources, especially the, for the African peoples and uh, and and our societies are diverse and varied societies, providing us with rich resources, whether they are rituals, uh, events, uh, feasts, uh, celebrations, seasons uh, in the calendar, the yearly calendar. I call it a cultural. The, the cultural each group has their their calendars uh, and and stages in life, rites of passage and stages in life. All those rituals that go along with that are moments for. Re, 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 reinterpreting, uh, reassessing who we are and uh, expressing ourselves, um, uh, defining who we are in terms of the group who I belong to, the community. But also we have room. There's also room for us to realize that we are, we are individuals, beings with yeah. an individual identity, a unique identity. And we did touch on this about uh, the, the tendency to see African uh, expressions of the cells or identity as being collective identities only, you know. Uh, I, I disagree to some extent. Yes, the collective sense and solidarity stands out, but I also believe strongly that there is room for your individual expression and identity, your unique contribution as Dorsey, as Alisa, to come yeah. through. And we did mention how it comes through in the naming. You know, the name in, in the African society, the name you bear is very important. You know, yeah. uh, it's not carelessly assigned to you and given to you. Um, it, it, uh, it Names contain in many of our varied, you know, cultural groups, names are meaningful. They are almost sometimes like prayers, you know, that your, your group or your family want to, to, to blessings, to, to have you uh, prosper, prayers for your prosperity uh, or for calling out a gift that they would like to see manifest much more and fully that you have. Or, or, or recognizing there's a something about you uh, that uh, they want to see expressed fully in the world. So um, those are the resources we have. My uh, question is why we don't work with those resources, you know, as important resources uh, to innovate that, on for ourselves, that you, you know? And that's what Go I on, think Alisa. question. Yeah. Because you know, you, you, I really like the idea that both of you, um, uh, spoke about, about, you know, this, uh, this time we are now in, you know, creating, building the new Africa. And so what, how do you think we could use our culture and our cultural industries to really, um, 
help developing our continent and you know um, make it benefit uh, the, the 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 population. You know, have 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 it more um, economical, valuable, if I can say it like this. How how do we do that? Maybe Dossi, you can speak more about your initiative. How you know what is the objective with that? You 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 mentioned the the need to to to, to create more cultural uh, entrepreneurs in this area, and you know to to help uh, gather the the youth. How 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 do we benefit from from culture and our cultural in, industries to make our continent more economic? I'm curious to yeah to know from Darcy also that because he said this I really like when he said it is it's not mere entertainment yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I'd love us to work with that as 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 Africans that uh, we didn't see our artwork and our art well, we're using even a language that the West uses a lot and the Europeans see the art that way for us it was so tied to our uh, in a holistic manner it it, it served beyond of just mere entertainment, there was something else going on there, whether it's education or healing. But I'd like to hear, because Darcy talked uh, uh, about that, and because he's an artist and working on this opera and theater, I'm just yes. I'm also curious to know, how do you go beyond just the, the entertainment? May I, we just come and watch you, and then we clap our hands, and then we go. <laughs> yes, exactly. Happening? Yeah. <laughs> I know that because I'm an artist, and uh, all the time... Uh, I meet people uh, thinking uh, that I'm an entertainer. What well, I am, yes, I think yeah. uh, it's not a bad thing. But that, it's not uh, bad, yeah. But it's not bad. But it's, uh, uh, for example, um, in the Rona Arts Institute, we, have, we created this um, publisher house, Moyo, mm -hmm. for literature, for writers. Um, with this uh, analysis, that our best uh, writers uh, are more um, connected to uh, Western countries because the publisher house are there and the their um, literature is in French and uh, in English and uh, and uh, the audience is there and uh, but we need. Uh, this literature in our language to create uh, a more audience for them. Because, yeah. for example, in, in uh, we, are, we work on the, on books, but mm -hmm. also audio books. With audio books, you can have with the radio, radio uh, spread literature, even the far countryside mm -hmm. corners. And this is... Um, also very important to uh, from for our heritage our language mm -hmm. but it's also creating a market a big market a big market because culture create values too mm -hmm. and uh, if for example in uh, east africa uh, community there is a, a community of more than 100 millions of people Speaking Swahili. It's a very important uh, tool to, for um, for music, for movies, for literature, and uh, this is a, a richness very great and to it's beyond entertaining. Uh, it's 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 entertaining, but it's uh, creating jobs, to creating uh, growth, and to create a big market. We are now people uh, in the African Union. They are talking about the, the the African market now. But African market, you can create the market just only with politicians. You need population to be to to be in the process. To, uh, to create connections and, uh, to create a kind of, um, uh, yes, uh, a space, uh, where, uh, values can, uh, be disseminated very easily. And that's why I think culture can be, uh, uh, 
a big opportunity to for economic growth in Africa. Okay, okay. So so my next question will be then how how you know at the policy level mm. what what is missing? What what do we need? What do our governments need to do for, for it to be applied actually? We need money. Yeah, then they need to connect. <laughs> they need also to connect with the with the people in 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 and to center some of that. Uh, let me take go back to what Dossi was saying about the cultural industries and all. Uh, uh, who is the musician in? This, we need to begin with our understanding of the musician. <laughs> you know how we understand the musician in our society, you know, or the one who sings. You know, uh, in the West African uh, uh, region, you and cultures, you have the notion of the griot uh, in some yes. of the groups there. But the, the the griot is not just unique to Western Africa. In all of the African peoples and societies across the continent, you have these people who are gifted in music and they add value in society. The question is, how did people see them? You see, at that point, you're not in root, you're not in this capitalist and neoliberal economy where things are commodified, you know, and, and the good given is in exchange with money, you know. So we are in this moment of money and 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 and, and I, I call it the capitalist moment. Uh, but that doesn't stop us from saying, but wait a minute, who is the musician so that we can really see the, the full value from our perspective? And for me, especially uh, my exploration of just who is this artist? What is the role of this artist, the so-called artist uh, in the African society? These people, the, 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 the ones we call musicians, those who sing uh, and, and observing uh, uh, the, the role of all these uh, phenomenon like music, uh, 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 miming and, and acting, dance, you know, uh, poetry. Uh, and they, they, they were always part of rituals you know, that served a purpose, you know, gathering us together at certain times of the year, uh, marking the calendar, I'll call it the local group's calendar, uh, uh, which is lost to us, unfortunately. We need to recover some of these calendars for the meanings that they had behind, you know, those rituals. And maybe, you see, there's such a rich uh, uh, source of, 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 of insights and ideas we are not even paying attention to. But those were moments for reflection. I mentioned earlier about the funeral, using the funeral and the rituals of, 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 of uh, escorting uh, the, the dead to join the ancestors uh, and, and paying attention to the languaging, wording, who does what and all, uh, who comes in to sing and what kinds of dances, why you dance this dance, now and you don't dance it at another time and 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 it's like there was careful thinking around it it's not just haphazard you know um uh, but it's the body the, the 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 mobilization of your whole entire self is not just the mind you're not just a, a rational being there's both the mind the heart the body as even a knowing system an intelligent system an intelligent thing you know uh, uh and integrating that so um the cultural industries the musician for me uh, the poet uh are are they are, they are they have this philosophizing they do you know, if we think about it, uh, there are these insights they have. They are our critics. They are, they are, they are our eyes. They are noticing uh, things we are doing. They are seeing patterns and they are telling us. They are mirroring it back to us. You know, so those moments are moments of reflection, of reconsideration, calling to attention, uh, uh, remembering because some of these music uh, uh, songs and uh, dances are to remember, you know, uh, those who have gone before us, who we are, our history, uh, and, 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 and to recommit to continuing the lineage or continuing the line, you know, or continuing the values. There's also healing because we have all these spiritual healers in our communities, our, 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 uh, uh, 
doctors if I could say that all that has been with a, a form of, re, of 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 missionizing the, in, in religion that that quickly and hastily considered it demonic and savage and having no relevance we have thrown away a lot that is in my view is, is very useful would have been very useful for understanding and reinterpreting our own spiritualities and because I believe there is a there is a spiritual dimension to development um we as Africans are very spiritual beings. <laughs> yeah. And 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 yet we haven't really inspected uh, uh and maybe leaving, leaving it to academics to, and 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 uh, theologians to do it, but in our everyday life to reflect on that. Uh and and and, and so also a lot of these artists are healers. You know, when they walk us through dance, when they walk us through miming, because a lot of these artistic uh, endeavors that we call artistic or the arts, the dance, the theater, uh, and all were interactive. Did you notice that in our own cultural manifestation of these things? It's not just sitting to look. Uh, the audience and, the, and, the, and the, the, the artists are in a conversation and in a relationship. And the artist thinks how they are going to engage the audience in this uh, conversation and takes them somewhere, you know, uh, creates a platform and a, a virtual, another reality where we can actually solve a lot of, of, of problems. I just want to narrate an incident I noticed when I was doing my work in Northern Uganda and, and, and doing the, uh, uh, at a, a really tough time, they were coming out of and struggling uh, to, to address this uh, armed conflict in, 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 in Central Uganda in the north, north central Uganda, uh, uh, on, on my way to our one of our project uh, areas and to consult with the community, um, I, it was broad daylight and it was at a time when there was curfew. You know, you had to move and do your work uh, uh, during the day, but by a certain time you had to have retired curfews the night. So the, the evening, you know, those evening entertainments that you usually have uh, could no longer be done because of the insecurity. Uh, so on my way to the project site, I, I saw uh, a market, you know, so with, with, and it was a livestock market with pens and um, uh, in one little area, a town we passed through. And there was this big field and uh, a lot of goats, you know, and some cattle, but goats and 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 a lot of the men were there and uh, trading. So I was told, oh, that's a uh, the the livestock market is is there, so people are coming in to uh, sell or purchase uh, livestock. Um, on our way back, a couple of hours later. <laughs> uh, instead of there were no live, I didn't see livestock, but dancing. The pens were turned into, uh, I saw young men dancing, you know, and just people dancing. And I said, this is interesting. Why, what is happening there? So, oh, that's the, now that's the, 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 the disco, the night, the day, the day club, night club for dancing. This is day. Mm -hmm. And that stayed with me. And, 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 uh, and, and I also noticed that we did a lot of dancing and singing in, in those contexts of, of, of conflict. Uh, and, and, I kept wondering what is happening here. You know, we we are faced with this reality of 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 our lives could go any time, but at the same time, the best dancing and the best singing I've ever had is here. You know, and I realized it's a it's it it was we were doing more than merely dancing. We were we were invoking life in a situation of uh, that was death. You know. That that was that that seemed to be full of of death. We were we were making a space for life, and we were we were speaking with our bodies, with our voices, not writing uh, uh, policies to <laughs> and all. But at the local level, that was our policy. We were invoking it in that sense, and and going and doing it in a, I would say in a soul or spiritual uh, uh, manner. Uh, 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 and, and that leads me to the question of to what extent are policies integrated with the local reality? Um, because you can write a policy um, and at that level, it makes sense to you as a policymaker. But at the local level, 
where the uh, local person is confronting the question of whether they will survive that day because of an ongoing war that is even the government is finding very difficult to deal with or address. Uh, um, how do you deal? What? How does that policy resonate at that level is my question. And that's a question I kept asking. And I found that the people making sense, helping people make sense and people not knowing who can help them make sense, who are coming up, who are drawing on their cultural resources, the dance, the music, let us get through this day. It's as if to say, let us get through this day. And the, the dancing is like the shedding of the stress, the immense adrenaline you have to work with in that situation, you know? And, and, and so we need to do a bit more thinking about what is that situation about and how do these resources come to bear? And it is the artist who was shining for me the poet in the community, they are creating a place for reflection. If they are singing, we are listening. If they're getting us to dance, we are dancing. Uh, and I'm not saying that the dance was just merely cultural uh, dances and all. I mean, there was a, a lot of Ndombolo there, Congolese mm -hmm. music and all. And, and, and saying, look, look at that reinterpreting and using the, 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 the developments in, in even our, our, indigenous music because I know the Congolese music combines Western uh, uh, forms with uh, 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 the Americans Latin forms and also their own indigenous forms and innovations in Western technology with, to do with musical instruments but also enhancing the, the African. So we have this, this uh, bringing, uh, picking, using ideas from elsewhere and also blending with our own rich resources uh, to create something new that makes sense and helps us make sense of where we are now because we are not in the past. <laughs> we are not in the living in in the in in the Gulu or, or Northern Uganda Gulu district or Kitgum district where we, of, of, of 200 years ago or, or or Kitgum of 200 years ago. It's 2021. And, 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 and um, how does my cultural resource make sense? So I feel that we haven't looked at our cultural resources enough, valued them for what they are, and those who bear the gifts, those who, in whom these gifts are and, and express them and body them, the doses of this <laughs> world, we haven't really valued them. People say, ah, you know, but we'll run and buy a, an album for somebody else who is in, in, not from within our group. We take it so for granted. We haven't really valued. And I wonder whether that's part of the loss of the colonial legacy where we didn't, we lost value in uh, our, our, those who are, who are the gifted musicians, the drummers and all. Uh, when we think even how they used to uh, learn, uh, it was through apprenticeship commissioning and rituals that uh, 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 that that would that would satisfy you if you want to say it that way you know mm -hmm. and as a good a good in the community you are you are a good in the community and the community is supporting you we, we supported them you know <laughs> traditionally what stops us from supporting them now what stops us from paying in this if we are in this commodity what stops you from paying good value to our African musicians, you know, and not take it for granted. I think we need to value them and 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 give and and because they are doing something to 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 us. They are ritual. I call them ritual uh, 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 leaders who are very relevant for people, educators. Uh, and and yeah, so we need. We are not integrating that. They need to be centered. In other words, they really need to be centered. The resources they have need to be centered. Doss has talked about the language, and he says it opens a market. And and I would add, it opens an audience. It centers an audience that is marginalized right now because we are speaking in English, we are speaking in French, we are not even speaking in Swahili, and and even in our own languages. So we have already marginalized in this moment a group of people. So by centering uh, those people with the language, uh, they, they come to view uh, and, and, and they, they are heard to because we are an interactive <laughs> uh, people and they, they, they see, oh, I have a participation. I mean, I contribute to make, I can participate. Um, and I think that opens up uh, uh, more insights. It enriches 
uh, the contributions. And, and maybe that's one path for how policy becomes rooted. Uh, as it is now, I just feel that a lot of our policies, especially when we're peace building, responding to violence, uh, uh, which really has to be grounded, uh, is, is kind of, uh, it is yet to be rooted in, in our cultural understandings of even what these violence are. In, and that's where I am right now. How are the Mozambicans in the North uh, reinterpreting that violence or reconsidering that violence and their place in, in, in that violence? Uh, how it relates to them, and and whether uh, or not they are, they are, they have some ideas of how it could be addressed, and nobody's even listening to those ideas because we are scholars. You know, I'm coming with my PhD and everything, and I have the answer. Um, maybe not. Maybe the answer is within Mozambique in the north, but we need to listen to them. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we are coming to the end of the of this discussion, but I really wanted to ask you, uh, you know, my wrap up question, uh, which is, what is the Africa you want? That's it. Yeah, I, I can uh, answer uh, this question uh, the the same time the the previous question about uh, uh, how, what we expect to our public uh, institutions and the states and. Uh, there were many things, there are many ways to see the culture, but if we were talking about the industry, mm -hmm. that means really artists and uh, culture operators in Africa need resources. That's it. I'm dreaming to see more African movies produced in Africa, not in uh, um, Western farms only, but to see more experience like a Nollywood in Nigeria because it's a That's very it. yes. good experience it's, to see yeah. how culture uh, with, uh, yes, resources from the country can create uh, richness and jobs and uh, meaning to the same time and create a huge audience. And uh, I want to see the Africa uh, independent because to produce your own artists and the thinkers on your soil, it's the intellectual independency. Uh, exactly. And it's, uh, it's also, uh, that's Africa I am dreaming of. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Darcy. What about you, Bertha? Uh, it's along the lines of Dorsey and saying that the Africa I dream of is the Africa where people believe and uh, they have already have the rich resources that are needed uh, for, their, for realizing their aspirations and potentials, that the resources are with them in hand. And, and so the question turns on oh, how do we use these resources or leverage them to create the kind of Africa that we want. So um, um, the Africa I want is of Africans believing in themselves as agents and change agents and transformers, you know, and that it is possible to do it where we are right now and not waiting until uh, a, a, a donor arrives uh, or, 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 so, or, or, uh, or thinking that it, it is somebody else to do it for, for you, even within the, the, the continent. So that's the Africa I want. I would like to see an Africa where uh, uh, we go to another extent. We're already philanthropists. We help through the remittances and all. But I would like to see an Africa where we organize ourselves, those who've made it, those who we have our own millionaires and billionaires. Uh, I'd like to see them they reinvest you know, at another level, to come together and think re realistically, not to imitate, but to think what those we have benefited. We are, we are, our wealth is coming out of, 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 of what we have created over here. How do we go back and uh, how do we reinvest it uh, uh, to even add more value and, 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 and make sure that it is perpetuated? It doesn't end with me and my generation. I don't see that perpetuation going on as I see in, in other societies outside the continent, you know? So we, we, we need to organize that philanthropy uh, part of it. I'm not saying that nothing is done, it's going on, but uh, I think drawing on our cultural ideas and resources of, to frame it, 
and and then innovate on them uh, for the, the the unique ways in which they contribute. I think would be one one step, and I believe somebody is doing that right now. Maybe they are not centered because uh, this cultural thing, you know, is always considered to be periphery. But I'm seeing it in a in a different way. I'm more than just a merely cultural being in that sense. But I I also want to say that I am in a context, and that context. Is, is 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 full of. Uh, I, I I was raised in a context uh, I, uh, that gave me or that that produced me <laughs> in many ways, and that context uh, is is a very mixed heritage. You know, as Dossi said, from colonial, uh, pre-colonial, um, and now the twenty-first century, and and being an African who is in what is known as the diaspora. You know. <laughs> And making my contribution from that place, you know, uh, is, is is has made me who I am. So I'm also a global person. So I want to also say that uh, I want an Africa where people can see themselves as contributors at the local level, at the national level, in their communities too, and in the world. They're free. They see themselves free agents and they can, uh, and it's not like I need permission to contribute uh, <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, you've got an idea, you want it to go global, let it go global, you know, and I think you have the cultural resources and the leverage to do that. And then for us to support one another in, in that project, we need to really hold and value our our cultural uh, um, resources and and those who express them in the form of the artistic. I'll say it in the form of the artistic because there are many other dimensions to the cultural cultural. But I want to focus on the artistic. Uh, we need to invest in it and give them the serious uh, attention and merit because they are they are good for our soul. They are good for our souls. Wow, that's a very good good uh, good way to conclude. I think and yeah. Thank but you, you and uh, again, I ask you the your, 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 your Africa you dream of, uh, Alisa. Oh. Yes, oh. yes. Right. Thanks, Dorsey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us I'll, your own dream. <laughs> I won't say it very fast because we don't have much time. But really, for me, the Africa I dream of is um, first. She knows who she is, and she is proud yes, of yes. who she is. Yes. I think. I think that's that's a very basic thing but i think it can change everything you know so yeah that's that's what i would say about my my the africa i dream of <laughs> i like that thank you very much, yeah. very much. Yeah. It was very thank you very much yeah with you. and yeah. uh yeah i wish you success in your all your projects and thank yeah, you it's very, thank very, very very good to be with you too you. yeah thank you very much thank you thank Bertha. you, thank you Bertha. Uh,